What's up, guys? It's Philip Enriquez here for the Say What You Like Sports Podcast, bringing to you the Week 14 Top 10 NFL Power Rankings. But before I jump into my Top 10 here, I want to send out some special thoughts and prayers to Ryan Shazier, who went down in the Monday night football game. The Steelers did win the game 23-20, to but the headline is Ryan Shazier's injury. Uh, they're calling it a back injury. He was taken to the hospital via ambulance, and uh, it was a scary sight while he was down on that field because uh, it didn't really look like he had movement in his legs. So, you know, they... They went and they strapped him down and they sent him to the hospital via ambulance. Like I mentioned earlier, uh, just didn't look good. Scary sight. Hopefully, it's not as bad as it looked. But the fact that we haven't gotten any type of an update as this game is winding down kind of makes it all a bit more scarier, to be honest. But hopefully, let's all kind of hope and pray for the best at this point. And let's hope that Ryan Shazier is able to make a full recovery from that injury. Now, talking a little bit about this top 10 here, some of these teams in the towards the bottom of the top 10, well, I got to admit it, they're kind of sort of boring. I mean, there's lots of good storylines kind of around the teams that I would be ranking anywhere from 15 to 10. So looking at the top 10, people are thinking, hey, San Diego Chargers, they're on their way up. They're on a three-game winning streak. They started the season 0-4, and, and now... They are tied in a three-way tie with the Oakland Raiders and the Kansas City Chiefs atop the AFC West. And they're the hottest team in the division with the best defense in the division. And yet, they're not a top 10 team yet. I mean, you don't get to start out 0-4 and then make the top 10. They're going to have to show me that they can uh, go ahead and divide themselves and separate themselves from the rest of the pack being the Oakland Raiders and the Kansas City Chiefs, but they're right on the cusp of the top 10. Just like another team on the cusp of the top 10 is the Atlanta Falcons. I mean, these Falcons are sort of on their way down. I mean, this was the team that represented the NFC in the Super Bowl last season, but they're just inconsistent and following a loss, it's kind of tough to keep them where they need to be or where they should be, and that's in the top 10. So, kicking off the top 10... Let's do it. Starting off with boring old number 10, I have the Tennessee Titans. Now how in the hell could I leave the Tennessee Titans off the top 10? They're 8-4 and four and tied for first place in the AFC South. And I was talking a bit about last week that I truly feel that it's going to come down to that last week of the season and that showdown for the division with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now the Tennessee Titans have been pretty healthy all season, but we're starting to see injuries begin to plague this team late in the season and that's not good news. The most notable injury was defensive end Daquan Jones, who suffered a torn biceps and was placed on IR earlier today. But you know what? They're also hurting with cornerback Logan Ryan, who's in the concussion protocol. They got the tight end, Delaney Walker, who's dealing with some type of a right ankle sprain. And it's just not looking good because these are contributors. These are players that have helped get this team to 8-4 and four and competing and staying and surprising me by staying in the top 10 here all the way deep into week 14, man. Can you believe it? The Tennessee Titans, I never would have thought they would be making this run this late in the season. Another team that's muddling along, but yet still continues to stay in the top 10 here. At number 9, I have the Carolina Panthers. Now, the Carolina Panthers are coming off a loss, a 31-21 loss, but that's to the New Orleans Saints. And the New Orleans Saints... <laughs> they ain't no slouches, if you know what I mean. I mean, this team can really run the ball with Kamara and Ingram. And I was a little bit shocked that Carolina's defense, you know, got dominated because usually the Carolina Panthers defense is that defense that is stout all the way around and is something that you can depend on week in and week out. It's usually the offense that's a bit up and down. But, you know, maybe it was just one of those games for the defense. You know, every team's allowed to have a clunker every now and then. But like I mentioned earlier, this Carolina Panthers team is in prime position for a wild card spot. They're still not completely out of the NFC South race. So they're ready to make their run into the playoffs as inconsistent as they have looked at times. 
they've looked equally great. So no reason to panic off of just one loss here. Let's see what these Panthers can do in the last final quarter of the season and see if they can keep it up and make their way back into the playoffs. Now a team y'all better watch out for in at number eight, the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now for the past couple of weeks, I've been ranting and raving just how impressed I've been with this Jacksonville defense. But here's the scary part now, guys. Blake Bortles, he's starting to pick it up. Now he's been inconsistent at best throughout most of the season, but this weekend, he threw for a season high 74% of his passes, blowing out the Colts 30-10. And I know what you guys are saying out there. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just the Colts. Anybody can throw for 140.8 passer rating against the Colts, right? Yeah, that, that might be true. That might have been a factor. Look, I'm not saying that I would favor these Jacksonville Jaguars over a team like the New England Patriots or the Pittsburgh Steelers in the playoffs. But with a defense like that, and if we could just get decent quarterback play out of Blake Bortles, we're talking about a team that can pull off an upset. They definitely belong here at number 8 in the top 10, and this team definitely belongs in the playoffs this season. Straight up. Coming off a 24-10 win over the Philadelphia Eagles at number 7, the Seattle Seahawks. Now, I have to admit, I had my doubts about this team. Losing some key players on that defense had me scared from picking this team, uh, from making any noise in December, let alone in January. But they proved me wrong once again, or at least Russell Wilson did, because Russell Wilson looks like a legitimate favorite for MVP with the quarter of the season left. But impressive. You know, the Seahawks do what they've been known for doing, and that's dominating at home when they're up in Seattle. And not even the Eagles' offense was able to gain any real traction during that game and pose a threat to the Seattle Seahawks up there. So Pete Carroll, Russell Wilson, you're in good hands. It looks like a team that's ready to make just another playoff run, no matter who they're missing on the defense. So... I had my doubts, but I can't doubt them any longer, and that's why they're up here at number 7 this week. In at number 6, I give you the Los Angeles Rams. Now, these LA Rams have a lot to be happy about after this week. For one, they're 9-3 and three, and off to their best start since 2003. This is the franchise's first winning season in 14 years. So there's a lot to savor after that 32-16 victory over the division rival Arizona Cardinals. So for as much as the LA Rams coaching staff wants to take the one game at a time approach, and even the fan base for that matter, they have to be smiling just a little bit. They have to be feeling themselves just a little bit because for the first time in 14 years, you can call yourself winners. Look in the mirror. You're a winner today, and that's with a quarter of a season left. You're able to do that, so props to the Rams. Now, the only challenge left for them this season is to hold off the suddenly surging Seattle Seahawks and win that NFC West title and get a home playoff game in L.A. in the Coliseum. In at number five, I have the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now, these Steelers are coming off the 23-20 victory on Monday Night Football over the Cincinnati Bengals. And the Bengals, man, they're just a train wreck of a team. I mean, they were steamrolling over this Pittsburgh Steelers team in the first half. But Pittsburgh does what good teams are supposed to do. And Cincinnati does what bad teams are supposed to do. Bad teams lose the game in the second half. Good teams win the game in the second half. So I guess I shouldn't be all that shocked and surprised by the comeback. But... You know what, like I mentioned before, Ryan Shazier, hopefully we get some good news soon because they're going to need him if they're going to challenge the New England Patriots in these playoffs. Shazier is a big, big part of that defense. So let's all hope that he can make a recovery and help this Pittsburgh Steelers team out in the future. Coming off a big 31-21 win over the Carolina Panthers in at number four, the New Orleans Saints. Now, there's no holding back this New Orleans Saints team for me anymore. I am thoroughly impressed by what this team is able to do, not only on offense, but on defense. 
The defense looks to be back to its 2009 form where it's just opportunistic, can get a few turnovers and help pave the way for that offense to just roll over and score points on any defense. And when you have Alvin Kamara, who's looking like the NFL Rookie of the Year, at least on offense, and Mark Ingram is having a season like I haven't seen him have yet in the NFL. I mean, I don't remember him being that good since his college days. And so that's saying a lot because he was a dominant, dominant college player. But when you look at it, Kamara has 60 rushing yards with 66 receiving yards, two touchdown runs. Ingram, 85 rushing yards, 37 receiving yards and a TD. They're doing it on the ground. They're doing it in the passing game. These two backs are the heart and soul of this New Orleans offense. And and don't forget, they still have a Super Bowl winning quarterback like Drew Brees on the roster. So plenty of reasons, plenty of weapons to be fearing this New Orleans Saints team in the playoffs. No shame this week for the Philadelphia Eagles who dropped down to number three in this week's power rankings. Coming off the 24-10 loss to the Seattle Seahawks because... The Seattle Seahawks just do what the Seahawks do, and that's handle their business at home. And the Philadelphia Eagles, they're no exception to that rule. Now, the Philadelphia Eagles may have been knocked out of the number one seed if the playoffs started today, but they still have a first round bye, and they're still able to clinch the NFC East title, get a home playoff game with one more win on the season. Now, this next game is probably the biggest game on the schedule remaining for these Eagles. They have the division leading LA Rams from the NFC West and if they can handle their business flex their might show their metal and beat these Rams they show their legitimate contenders for the Super Bowl this year and I'm sure they're ready to get back on their game and hopefully retake that number one spot in the NFC playoff seating in at number two you have the Minnesota Vikings and for the Minnesota Vikings it's been a long climb up to number two in these power rankings and an even longer climb seemingly for the number one seed in the NFC East. So thanks to some crazy tie-breaking rules, the Vikings are now the number one seed because the Eagles and the Vikings have not or will not play each other this season. So you throw that tiebreaker out the way and we start going into conference records, division records, and a bunch of crazy strength of schedule tiebreakers. But all in all, in the end, the Minnesota Vikings are the number one seed and, you know, they're coming to play each and every week. Case Keenum is doing his thing, keeping Teddy Bridgewater out of the starting lineup at QB. And the defense is just backing him up, taking out players left and right on the offensive, hard-hitting hits. I mean, you got receivers scared to go across the field on that secondary. They're making the plays. Xavier Rhodes balling out at cornerback. These Vikings, they're legitimate legitimate threats to make it to the Super Bowl and guess what if they would they would have a home Super Bowl game and that'd be the first time in history a team would play the Super Bowl at home you never know it's a little early but it's also hard to doubt it at this point when you see these Vikings play the New England Patriots find themselves in familiar territory back at number one on the say what you like NFL power rankings I gave this team a boatload of props last week, so I don't want to toot the horn too long here. And I'd like to focus on the dirty, late hit that Rob Gronkowski laid on Tredavious White, a defenseless receiver on the floor. And Gronk just cheap shot at him, man. And he's going to serve a one-game suspension. But in my opinion, he should be serving at least a two-game suspension. And at the very, very least, he should have been kicked out of the game immediately for a hit like that if the nfl wants to show that they're serious about protecting these players and that they really care about the safety of these players a hit like that should never have been allowed gronk should never have been allowed to finish that game even earlier in the season when chicago bears linebacker danny trevathan was suspended for that hit on Devonte adams from green bay he was ejected from the game and then, or I'm sorry, he wasn't ejected from the game, so they suspended him two games, and he later appealed it down to one. So at the very least, Gronk should have been given the two games and let him appeal that. But uh, you know what? I, I just didn't like the hit at all. I think that shows poor sportsmanship from Gronk. And as far as the New England Patriots go, they're used to winning without Gronk. 
Gronk isn't a make or break player to this New England Patriots offense. He's usually good for about six to eight games, and then he usually blows something out, and the Patriots go on to win a Super Bowl without him. We've seen that before, so not a big loss for these Patriots, but just, you know, for me, a big loss of respect for Rob Gronkowski this week. And that's all I gotta say about that.